afternoon, my psychic medium friend, Jennifer Edwards. Hi, Janine. Oh, I'm so glad it's Friday today and I've got a lovely hot cup of tea here this time. Um, and so I've been looking forward to sitting down and having a chat. So what are we chatting about today? Well, today I thought we would talk about luck. What do you think? Oh, brilliant. Brilliant. Bring it on. Bring it on, yeah. Now, Great. you know, as you go through your career as an astrologer, you start to notice a lot of things about people. You start to notice who's blessed and who's not blessed by what's in their chart. Now, I haven't read a lot about this, but I know traditionally we always saw the planet Jupiter as your good luck. Okay. And good the concept of luck, I don't think, is very fashionable. Wouldn't you agree? Yes, because, you know, Janine, um, we have talked about this before, how, you know, today it's about thinking positive. Thinking positive and you too will get everything you want. And, you know, that's so flawed and it's so, um, to me, pie-in-the-sky stuff because they don't take into account karma or soul growth or anything. So if you can see in someone's chart whether they actually have luck and where it is, wouldn't that solve a lot of problems? Yeah. Because it gets very despondent when you think positive yeah. and nothing happens. I'm sure you've experienced that. That's right. That's right. So you can put up here wrong areas. So if you don't have luck in certain areas, it's really best not to push your luck. It's as literal as that. You'll have luck in other areas. And I think it's um, a quality of humility to know where your luck truly is. Mm -hmm. So you don't make mistakes. Mm -hmm. And I've noticed this with myself lately. I've come to terms with where my own personal luck lies. And even we were having a conversation earlier on in the week about um where luck lies and it hadn't even occurred to me that where my you know the extent of my own luckiness in only certain areas and if you familiarize yourself with those certain areas you can really maximize your luck so i think we've just come out of you know maybe a 10-year era of um thinking positively you know amidst the sea of anxiety it's all about your thoughts it's all about, you know, in business, it's all about attitude and, you know, you create your own luck. Well, that's fine. Every time somebody tells, tells me you should think positive, I always want to look in their chart and see where their luck lies because I don't want to hear that from a lucky person. No. And, you know, I remember if, if I can give a short story, um, Many years ago, I think I was um, about 40, late 30s, and I was talking to this woman and I said to her that, um, who was in, in the field, and I said to her, you know, I said, this positive thinking stuff is not working for me, you know. And she said, oh, and she gave an example of a friend's daughter who was very lucky. Like, it didn't matter what she did. It didn't matter who she mucked around with, she everything fell into place. And I said, I don't understand why that happens. And she said, well, she thinks positive. So when she got married, she wanted to live in a house on the seafront. And the person she married had a grandparents who had a house on the seafront in, in a regional state. And so she ended up living there because they died. And so they all moved in there and she's had a very happy life. And she said to me, you see, she just thinks positive. She sits down and she asks spirit for it and it comes. And I said to her, well, I've been doing this for five years, day, every morning, every night, without fail. I'm the only person I know in my world who is like a dog with a bone on these things. And it hasn't happened and I'm over it. And she said, well, you, you know what her words of wisdom to me were? You're doing it wrong. And, you know, I went off and I felt really depressed because I just thought, how much more can I do? Yeah. And so right. now when you talk about your charts, I can see it was never going to happen. I wish someone had told me that. 
away no. from all those years. And when did the secret come out? Maybe twelve years ago. 10, yeah, 12 years about that. Ago. Yeah, and, and yeah, that sold like hotcakes. And how many people manifested things after seeing that? Probably not many people. Probably 0.01 percent. Because the lucky people would have already manifested it. They didn't need a video. Yeah. Um, so I first started thinking about astrology and luck about four years ago. Uh, when I was having a conversation with a friend of mine, I was reading her chart and she had Jupiter in the area of children. And I remember this conversation very clearly and I was having problems with my own child at that stage. And she had um, two grown up boys and she said, I've never had any problems with my boys they're, they're fantastic human beings. I have a great relationship with them. They've not caused me any stress. But this woman was also very arrogant about her parenting and believed that her children were so fantastic because of her personal principles and philosophies. She was an incredibly principled person. Very left, very green, very vegan, very you know, trying to lead pure lifestyles, politically rebellious. She believed that it was because of her strong parental principles that her children turned out so well. Perfect. Yes. And so she basically took all the glory for that. And that's what happens with Jupiter. Jupiter rules luck, but it also rules arrogance. So in areas where you've been very lucky, you can become very arrogant and assume that you did it all. It was your personal doing. And this is where you've got to become very careful. It wasn't your personal doing. You were blessed. So did she have her parenting Jupiter in her parenting house? Yeah, Jupiter house, in the area of children. So it was going to happen. Great. Yeah. Yeah, no problems conceiving, giving birth. They caused her no problems. They were great human beings in the world. And I have to agree with that. It was true. They never asked her for anything. They were all independent. That caused her the least possible stress in her life. She had other stresses, but she took all the glory for it and thought that it was because of her good nature. And I sort of had a light bulb moment at that point because of what I was going through and I thought gosh how arrogant are we when Jupiter's in a certain part of our chart and then I started applying this idea to other people and seeing where their luck was and where their arrogance was as well because when we but when we when everything goes our way we actually believe we're the creators of that Yes. We believe, oh, oh, I just thought positive thoughts. I thought them. I'm sorry. It wasn't me who did it. It was something greater that inter intervened, and it's called grace. Yes. Christians have always called it grace. It's when something falls out of the sky. It's a blessing. You're graced, and it's your luck. It's now, in the East, we call it good karma, don't we? Yeah. And, you know, Janine, I don't want to put down positive thinking because I use it a lot to get through things. Yeah. And I always see the cup half full, and I think you do too. So no matter, you know, it is a great gift to be able to think like that. And I think you fall in one camp or the other, the cup half empty or the cup half full. I'm a half full girl. And so it's got me through my life and got me to get up in the mornings to keep going. And I know you've experienced that. So thinking positive is really good. But what I like about what you're talking about is that you can tell me, don't worry about having, you know, lots of money and being able to live this wonderful life because you have no luck in that, right, according to your chart. And I think that's a great thing um, because, as you say, you can concentrate where your luck is. So it's important to not waste your efforts in areas that are not rewarding. And it's also important to know that to have a positive attitude is a method of dealing with adversity. Right. It's not about, you know, 
changing your luck. It's about dealing with day-to-day -day adversity. Yes. I you need to have a positive attitude when you yeah. face problems. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. So that was my first um, sort of awakening to this idea of luck and not luck. And I was thinking about my friend. Mm, I think you might be a little bit in an illusion of believing that your good parenting has created your good luck. And then I started looking at other charts and thinking, you know, where's luck in this person's chart? And how do they feel about that? You can either have a lot of gratitude for the luck that you have, or you can be arrogant about it and believe that you're a god. Okay. Yeah, I think think it would depend on how much luck you get. Mm. Life is really easy. You don't know any different, do you? You don't. You don't. Now there are very blessed places for Jupiter in in a chart when it comes to the West. So in the okay. West, we all want money, property, and career, right? Yep. So. If you have Jupiter in the place of career or the place of money, you're laughing. Yeah. You're going to think you're everybody else. You're you've going made to go, it. What is wrong with people? I yeah. was having a conversation with a friend of ours who's also a client with Jupiter in the area of career, and she, she said to me, oh, why don't you just go and do ABC? And I, I thought, wow. It's actually, that's actually a very complex thing you're talking about here and it wouldn't be possible in my personal life. Yeah. My personal limitations. But for her, it just seemed like easy peasy. Mm -hmm. Why don't you just go and solve that problem by doing X, Y, Z? Um, so that, that amuses me now, how people can just think something's really easy and they have all the gods on their side. Um, someone else I know is worried about their child in their mid-20s, but I keep saying to her, don't worry, your child's got Jupiter in the house of money. There's nothing to worry about. That no. child's always going to have money. Whether or not they appreciate it, who knows? Who knows? Well, you know, this is so interesting, Janine, because maybe for those who've just had a lucky life, they may listen to this and have an appreciation that, they are blessed. They are got grace this lifetime. And other people who are trying to write a book but don't have luck in publishing may be better off making, you know, um, wood carving and selling that. They'd be very successful. Who knows? But it would be great to have a look at some charts if you've got one there so yeah. that you can understand what you're talking about. That would be fantastic. Yeah, that's right. Um I will emphasize that um, every family, every culture, every country is going to appreciate different luck. Of course, yeah. You know, and I know uh, I've got Jupiter in the area of the high intellect in religion and, and um, academia. And I know in India that's highly prized. To, to be a philosopher is highly prized, but you know, it doesn't necessarily pay my bills, if no. you know what I mean. So it's all, it's all, and you likewise have Jupiter in the area of mysticism mm. and psychic ability. And mm. I don't have that talent, but you certainly do. That also does pay the bills, but it's a natural gift. Yeah. And I think I said to you the other day, you're so lucky you have prophetic dreams. Yes, that's true. <laughs> That's true. And you're so lucky that you're psychic because I, I'm not psychic like you and I have those talents and I really wish I did a lot of the time and my decisions in life. Mm. Um, so I'm going to share the screen now and I'm going to show you the chart of someone uh, I know and I read for from time to time. Okay. Um, so this person is a male and this person's about 40. This person is from Colombia and I was having a chat with him yesterday because I knew we were going to talk today about luck and I knew we were going to talk about lucky people. And so I was going through my head yesterday thinking, who do I know with an extremely lucky chart? And I remembered Alan's chart. Okay. So here's Alan's chart. So I had the fortunate opportunity of, of um, having a chat with him yesterday and I asked him the big question, 
straight out, I said, Alan, I'm doing a talk on luck. Do you believe you are a lucky person? And he straight away said, yep, I'm lucky. There's no doubt about it. I'm a lucky person. He said, I just have to think of something and I manifest it. Wow. And I said, yeah, I thought you'd say that. Now, why did I think he'd say that? Because he has Jupiter, the planet of luck, on his ascendant. Oh. Right? So his ascendant is five degrees Virgo, which is not nat naturally lucky. And Jupiter is six degrees. So right on the ascendant. The ascendant is the most important point in the chart at nine o'clock. And what the ascendant is, is your personality. So in Alan's case, he has a lucky personality. So that, that's like the whole layer of your life, your personality. Your personality is lucky. It's not just one area of your life. It's your whole persona. It's yeah. the way you act in the world. It's the way you interact. So when he meets people, he's lucky in, in almost everything he does. So it's, it's definitely the very best place to have Jupiter. Downside is it makes you put on weight. Jupiter yeah. makes you expand. And I know Alan has complained to me on several occasions and he can only, he eats one meal a day and still puts on weight mm -hmm. and exercises a lot. So it can make you very well nourished, but we won't talk about that today because it's about luck. So he says things like, um, if I decide I want a new car and I can't afford it, a couple of months later, I have the opportunity of buying a new car and it just happens. Wow. He said, I just have to think about it and it manifests. Wow. I said, do you find you're in the right place at the right time? He says, always. He says, particularly when I'm traveling, I always get out of trouble when I'm traveling. I always meet the right person. Um, these people seem to know when to get out of trouble, right? So, you know, if they have to drive from the Gold Coast to Brisbane, they get a gut feeling they need to take a side detour around. Yeah. And what do you know? There's a car accident on the main street. They avoided it. They they just seem to be tuned in. Now, traditionally, we'd say in religion that they have the Holy Spirit with them. You yeah. know, in the world of mysticism, spirit is God. They have spirit guides, whatever yeah. you want to call it. Um, I would say, as an old-fashioned astrologer, we would say they can read the mind of God, right? right? So they're tuned into God's will. And it's, you know, the Christians would say when you align your, your, your small will with your, with your large will, the little will with the big will, that's when grace happens. So that's what Jupiter is. Jupiter represents religion, God, faith, spirituality, these people are naturally tuned in with the spirit. Wow. And that is what aligns them with, so, you know, that perfection of timing. So he would never have to listen to the secret. No, why would he? <laughs> He's, he was born doing all of that. Yeah, naturally. Mm. Yeah. And as you know, in Colombia, it's very religious. Yes. Yeah very very steeped in catholicism and he was saying like i suspect he doesn't have to go to church he doesn't have to believe in anything because he's just a natural believer he's so close to you know the big will or the will of god that there's nothing to go to church for except as you you've said before social life community being with people but and he's a particularly sort of not traditionally religious person but very faithful yeah so this is a manifesting chart you know this is where yeah. we all want jupiter there's there's other good places for jupiter and we'll do that in another uh video but um you know can you imagine if you're lined with the with the big will all the time can you imagine your outlook on life would be extremely optimistic you would have a very happy disposition. Of course, because you just know it's going to work out. I think I need a new house and I need it at this price and it probably will come. 
eventually. Yep. You know, whereas you and I could sit there for years and it would never happen. Yeah. Thinking positive. That's right. And, and it's so wonderful to know that the different people have different luck and some people just have all the luck. And yeah, he's one of them. Yeah. I have another client with the same configuration. She is a 63 year old woman. And even though she had a hard childhood, she was very, very lucky to get out of her hard childhood. She was extremely blessed got the right job at the right time, got into property at the right time. She says she only has to put on a tax lotto ticket and she wins. She just, she, she's a big new ager and she tries to teach everybody how to manifest. Yeah. And, I, and it, it makes me smile because she didn't have to learn that. No. She just did it. And I think her frustration is why doesn't everybody do it? Yes. Because, because it's happened so easily, it's they so don't easy. really understand it, do they? They don't understand the powers that they have and therefore they think other people are doing something wrong and she's like that. She thinks yeah. other people are just not thinking positive like you yeah. were describing. Like old, yes. It's quite insulting to people that have what we call in Greek astrology an afflicted Jupiter. It's insulting what, to people... It's called, um, to have a bad place, Jupiter is called an afflicted Jupiter oh, or a okay. sick Jupiter. Yeah. So it's insulting to say to someone with an afflicted Jupiter, you should just think positive. Yeah. Because it's not helpful. It's not helpful at all. So I, I guess the, the lesson here is to know whether you're lucky and when you, you are not and work with what you've got. You're going to be lucky in one of the 12 areas of life, I can guarantee yeah. you. Yeah. It might only be relationships. It might only be um, in Korea and nothing else. You know how you, have, you meet some people, and I've seen this in their charts, everything they do in Korea works, everything. Yes. They go from strength to strength to strength, but they can't get their relationship right. No. And they go, well, how come I can earn all this money and I've got this amazing empire and my relation life's terrible? Mm. And you look and Jupiter's in their area of Korea and I'm sorry, that's just karma. Yeah, that is karma. So Jupiter is a really important planet, isn't it? It's really important. And Jupiter moves around your chart every 12 years. So you're going to have fleeting opportunities every year so every year you're going to be lucky in one of the areas and then when you have a jupiter return every 12 years you have a burst of growth in that area okay. so for you for example jupiter's in the 12th every 12 years you'll have a very psychic year of psychic um opening wow um yeah i know <laughs> mine's in the era of teaching and you know, I, I do teaching as well as reading, as you know, and, and I sort of don't, I never focus on my teaching life and people just ring me up and say, can you teach this? Can you teach that constantly? And I have to constantly say, no, it's a growth area. It's out of control. And um, I sort of have to rein it in. Every 12 years, I get these huge opportunities to teach without any effort. I don't put any effort no. So you're not sitting there thinking positive and manifesting not trying to manifest a teaching, teaching position. It just comes. No, it just comes. People chase me. Yeah. Um, mm. And then I think, why, why are some other people such terrible teachers? I, <laughs> that's my arrogance. Yeah. I go, what's wrong with them? Can't they just teach? subject properly but that's my jupiter arrogance yes, so you yeah. know likewise with you you probably think why don't people just get it why don't they use yeah. their gut feeling yeah i do <laughs> i just suck it up and you know things will get better or whatever yeah um, but um yeah look it's hard it's um but i think it'd be really interesting if we did a uh, another session in the future and go through Jupiter in each house, Janine, so people can listen to it and have a look at their own chart, which they can download anywhere off the net and just see where their Jupiter lies. It That's may give hard. them um, a little bit of hope or 
at least inform them where they should concentrate maybe. Yeah, that's right. I also just wanted to point out one other minor detail in the chart. Yeah. There's another point in the chart called the part of fortune and that's that black cross. Yeah. Here. Now, mm. you, you probably heard about part of fortune. Part of fortune um, no, is one that. of the... It's, called, it's an Arabic part and there are over a hundred different points in a chart and they're determined by the angles of our particular planetary alignment. So you don't know what it is until you do a chart. But uh, where it turns out here is where you find your fortune and that is not necessarily where you find your luck. Right. Luck is, some, is, is your point of grace where like, everything just comes easy to you. You may not necessarily find your fortune in that area though. You could, but part of fortune is really where you make fortune. Fortune's money and, and that sort of material success. Success, yeah. So I always look at Jupiter first yeah. and then I look at um, uh, part of fortune second. But we can talk about that another time. Okay. Well, that'd be really interesting. So if you have the both, it'd be interesting, wouldn't it? It's always good to weigh the both up because a lot of people have a lot of success, uh, luck in some area, but that may not be where the money comes from. It's wrong. Okay. Right. Well, we should do that too. That would be really interesting. Wow. In this person's case, to say, you know, that Jupiter is, their whole personality is successful, but they might find their fortune in very uh, close interpersonal work, and that's the eighth house, like working very closely with someone. And, and this person does. They do very, very close work okay. with people. Okay. And so right. he's successful with that. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So what do you think? Wow, well, it's very enlightening and, um, and hopeful, really, because I think people can get their chart done and, um, have a, and ask to find out, well, where should I blossom in? So if you've got perfect children or you've got a perfect relationship, maybe that's what you get. That's it. And maybe that's a good thing. Or if you make a lot of money, like you said, um, but everything else is not working so well, maybe, you know, it's not about money that you need to concentrate on. It's about how do I fix having a relationship, whether it's with a yeah. partner or people, full stop. That's a very good point. You know, you, you've got to understand we have many lives and we come into this life with some advantages because mm -hmm. we don't have to develop that area. Correct. And, and so, yeah, and so, you know, it could also be in health. You know, a lot of people have a lot of health problems, as you know. And so it could be an affliction in the health and that's where you need to, to look at. And that's yeah. the way it is. That's mm -hmm. right. And um, a lot of people have big expectations in this lifetime of being happy, don't they? There's, there's this, mm. this assumption that you, you have a life to be happy. Mm. Now, we know as readers... That, that's not really the spiritual goal. No. Happy. That might happen on the other side, but here on the earth, you have to grow. Yeah. You, 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 you have to make a commitment to grow in areas that are weak. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure before you come into this world, um, you know, spirit says, here are the things I'm going to give you. And then here are the things that you're going to have to develop. Correct. Otherwise, you know, from my point of view, it's pointless coming. And I, when I meet people who have a really hard life, you know, I actually admire them. Whether they make it or not, they've actually taken on a lot. And they've actually decided at soul level before they've come, I'm going to grow this lifetime. It's okay to have everything at your feet, to have lots of money, and every time you have a problem, you can go and sail a yacht or travel the world or whatever. But it's not, life's not about that. It's nice to have it from time to time, but all the time, I think it would stop you from growing because it's harder for the rich man to get through the eye of that needle, and that's very true. 
because you you box yourself into that world and you forget what it's like and you and I talk a lot about how people are saying the COVID is great because it helps us all to sit and go within and find ourselves. But you and I talk about, well, what about the people losing their homes, you know, their relationships, suiciding, the children losing it mentally? You know, we look at the hardship because we've been there, right? And, and I think it's really important that people understand that life is about growth. And um, it's good to have some sunshine because we need that. But sometimes when I see someone in a wheelchair or I see someone um, struggling in life and they're good people and they've tried their best, I admire them more than the person who's made a million bucks. Because, oh. because you know, they've come here for soul growth. They've come here to pay back or to meet or to grow somehow, whether it's in compassion empathy whatever and you don't get that without going through stuff so i always sort of think people having a hard time don't always think it's because i'm a bad person or i'm hopeless it's because you've chosen to have a lot of soul growth and you are very strong and courageous soul that's how i look at very it very brave indeed there's mm. no bravery in luck no there's not and, and so I think it's really interesting what you showed today because it puts everything more in perspective, doesn't it? Yeah, and, and also, like I was saying, Jupiter can give you ego inflation in astrology. Mm -hmm. You've got to be really careful to identify your luck and rein it in. Yeah. Instead of assuming you're responsible for your luck, just go, I've been blessed. Yeah. And be humble about it. And, it's, and, and, and don't look down at other people because they can't do what you can do. Correct. And I think we learned that lesson when we talked last week about Alice in Wonderland. Well, we will be talking about it. Um, uh, and, um, you know, about getting through the small door in Alice in Wonderland, which is about getting that ego into humbleness to, mm. to see, to get through, you know, and, and find the secrets to life. Yeah. Mm. And there's great wisdom in counting your blessings, isn't there? And, mm. and realising that you do have them. It just may not be in the sort of white consumer yeah. area. That's right. That we think you want them. You do have blessings. We've all got them. If you've yep. got no money, you're probably blessed with intelligence. Yeah. And who knows? Yeah. Or children. And, and life is hard. And you know, the other thing, I think life is very hard in the West. It I is. Think out of, I think life in the West, even though we have more materialism, we've got education for women, especially women have more freedom. But overall, I think it's very hard in the West to live if you have no money or if you have very little money. You know, it's very hard because you're aware on one hand, but you don't have a lot of power on the other. So it's very hard and community is always not strong. So it's very hard, I think, in the West. Mm. Yep, definitely a different mm. sort of luck we have it here. It is a different sort very of luck. Mm. And I noticed that when I travel to India, that people assume I'm very lucky financially. Yep. And they really don't understand, you know, there's, there's blessings in, a, in Western culture, different sorts of blessings. Yeah. Um, anyway, it's a fascinating topic. I guess the take home message is to honour your area of luck, find out more about it, um, really work hard at, at counting your blessings and I'll, I'll just finish by saying, of course, if there's a lucky um, planet in your chart, there's going to be an unlucky planet too. Oh. And that's... I thought of that. Oh. Uh, okay. There's two, two um, important planets. One gives us luck, one gives us adversity. So for every lucky thing we have in our life, we have a planet of adversity too. And it also pays to know where your adversity lies. Yes. I was doing a reading for someone and you did a reading for them as well. 
um, after I did. And I was saying to this young man, um, you know, your partner may not understand that you have great luck in the air of Korea. You're young, but it, boy, is it going to take off in a big way? So I'd be sticking with you <laughs> for that reason. But he had sat in, in the fourth house of home and family and childhood. And so, you know, his personal life is always going to be a challenge. Mm -hmm. Have, getting a roof over his head, the challenge. Um, having a happy home life has been a challenge since he was born. So all of this career success, but home life not so good. Good, yeah. Yeah. So we yeah. can talk about Saturn positions in another in another I thought you were talking about Saturn. I was gonna to say to you, it has to be Saturn, doesn't it? I it hate that. <laughs> That's where we do all the growing. Oh God. So it says, I'm gonna give you these blessings and I'm gonna give you these hardships. Oh yeah, well please God, I've had enough of Saturn. It can drop off the face of the earth for all I care. <laughs> Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Well, that's All been right. a fun conversation. Yeah, look, it was so interesting and I'd really like to do in the future the houses um, where people can see where their luck is and um, it would be fantastic, I think, and maybe bring a bit more realism into this positive thinking and you'll get everything thing that's going on. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ciao. Ta-da.